It's a, it's a blend of everything, really, because the word respect takes you everywhere. I'm Pamela Johnson. I have lived in Eltham for a very long time. There's something about Eltham that's really lovely. I think it's the trees, the space, the people. Good morning, my name's Deanna Finn. I live in Kangaroo Ground and I've been a resident of the Nellumbeek Shire for over 40 years. Um, I enjoy living here and hopefully will continue doing so. Well, um, my name's Jan and um, I live in uh, Eltham. Nillumbik. Uh, I've been here for 22 years. Most of that time I've been involved with the Nillumbik Reconciliation Group and also another little organisation called CAVE, Community and Volunteers of Eltham. My name is Jenny Devitt and I'm 73 years old and I live in Nillumbik. I've lived in Nillumbik for since I was 32 um, and it was the most lovely place to bring up my children I um, can't think yeah. anything else. My name is Kathleen. I moved to Eltham in 1977 with my husband and three children. I really love the area and I'm very passionate about the things that we do in the Nillenbeck. My name's Pat Krebs and I've been in, I grew up in this area from the age of four, but then I went and lived somewhere else and travelled, so I've been back here for some time about 30 odd years. And um, yeah, I'm Sabi Bueller and I've lived in Nillenbeek for um, about 50 years. And um, I've been in Hurstbridge for 46 years, that's my base. Respect as an older woman, I think still encompasses what I learned about respect as a child. What it means to me is being heard being acknowledged, being valued. Really, respect for me is being considered, um, having your opinions considered. Not being ignored or spoken over or put aside. I'll give you an instance that I was in the, um, <clears throat> I was going to repair my back ramp and I went down to a wood yard that I was recommended to get some secondhand wood. And I, I felt that the man really kind of didn't want me to be there or something, wanted me, you know, because uh, I was going to do it myself and I've got all the tools. And he just, uh, he was really rude, really rude. It was like he couldn't believe his ears that I was actually going to do this project myself. <laughs> As an older woman, I sometimes feel that I'm invisible. So for me, respect means relating to a person on the basis of knowing them, knowing their story, and not just on the assumptions or stereotypes that um, are around. I grieve a bit because at this stage of my life, I think that respect generally, not only I'm experiencing lack of respect occasionally as an older woman, but at least I'm assertive enough to put out the call if I feel that I'm being ignored in a shop, for example, or somebody uses offensive language. I think it's a feeling of safety as well, of comfort. The latest violent death of a woman, um, she's number 45 this year in, in um, Australia. There's a group called Counting Dead Women Australia, which records violent deaths of women. There's 45 have been killed in 2020. That's just this year alone. Well, I don't know about being older because I was thinking about respect and um, what, what I actually respected in other people. So, uh, I mean, there's a, a quite a long list of things but one thing that really stood out for me was um, sort of people who have fearless convictions that they can stand up and speak 
for their cause or for people they love, for justice, for um, righting uh, wrongs that uh, need to be corrected. Respect means so many things. Um, it's not just about, you know, tipping your hat to a, um, you know, hierarchy or, I don't see that as respect at all, you know, so. During, during my um, working career, I had to fight very, very hard for respect. I was a teacher and I was, there were plenty of women who'd gone before me as um, assistant principals and, and things like that, but I somehow landed myself in a, in a very male orientated environment. And I had to really fight there for respect. And I probably let, let some things go that these days you would never, ever. I'll tell you a little story. My husband had to write a letter to the matron to say that he would not get me pregnant during my a midwifery course. Now, imagine if I asked someone to write a letter like that today. Excuse me, it wouldn't be happening. And he didn't want to, uh, but I said, if you don't, I can't get into the Royal Women's to do my midwifery. So it, it, when you think about that, that's, you know, we're only talking 40 years ago. It's not a long way, we've come a long way. We've come a long way. Respect looks like um, listening, kindness, um, being helpful. The way things are explained to you, that, that you're not considered an idiot. There's none of this, oh, you wouldn't understand that or anything like that. I had a, a person ring me last week to offer me some services as a registered nurse. And she was quite condescending on the phone. I think she'd seen my birth date and thought, here she is, she's an old lady, I'll be condescending. That didn't last long. I, my hackles rose very, very gently. I spoke as I would to anybody. And all of a sudden she got the message that I wasn't an old, old lady, I was an older lady. It's just like, you know, I just, you're just a silly old woman, you know, you haven't got much to contribute or whatever. Really knowing, understanding and a genuine interest in a person, that to me is part of respect. I find as I'm getting older that listening is just powerful, listening to other people's views. Accepting of others, even if I don't necessarily agree um, with other people's opinions. And even when you're speaking with people who have totally opposing views to you, you would listen and take on board what they're saying because there might very well be something in what they are saying that has escaped you before and is worth, you know, pursuing. To consider things and um, to be able to uh, be more open to other people really and the fullness of their lives and uh, respecting them. It's about respect too uh, for other people as well as respecting yourself and for what you've achieved. And respecting people who haven't got as lucky a life as you've got is also really important. I think an understanding of other people's cultures, understanding, well if they're recent immigrants they often come from war-torn countries and so they're going through some dreadful times and when they come here, we should be welcoming. Then when we look at our Indigenous people, they have so much to give to us and if we can embrace some of their culture and respect that they were here for so long that we have a long time to look back, not just the 200 years since the um, British arrived. I began thinking more about the Aboriginal people that I have respected. It, it's not only the leaders, Loacha, O'Donoghue, Benita Mabo, um, Faith Bandler. Look, there are many. Um, and then you think about all the grandmothers and the mothers uh, in the communities who are often very essential leaders in those communities. Then there were much older ones like um, Pastor Sir Doug Nichols and William Cooper and people who fought for the referendum and um, Charlie Perkins, a young man who 
took off um, in a bus with a load of people to um, speak and act against the injustices and the inequalities of his people. Here are young people who are standing up very fearlessly for um, treaty now, um, where there's a sense of the importance of being able to tell their own story, to know, for us all, to know the history and to accept it, to deal with it with apology and reparation in the name of um, uh, equality and uh, humanity. And uh, I find them very stirring, these young people that we see today. There is, in some areas, um, a lack of respect for people generally, for people of other cultures, lack of respect for people with disabilities, um, lack of respect for somebody who's perhaps a bit different to who you are. Well, disrespect is a learnt thing, I think. And it's the same with uh, racism and uh, um, violence and all of that sort of thing. That's a learnt thing. I think that's got to be worked on with children from a very early age. And it's respect to the other kids in the kindergarten, with your parents, with your puppy dog, all of that. And that, that grows with them, I think. I think it's just a lot to do with teaching kids about, uh, about respect for women in the first place. Really kind of putting a lot of time into um, teaching about that sort of thing when the kids are younger. And calling out bad behaviour, that's very important. Speaking up on behalf of people who cannot speak for themselves or haven't got the confidence. You've, you've got to really stand up for yourself. And, and command in a way, in a nice way, that respect. And sometimes it might be detrimental to your career. I hate that expression, there's nothing we can do about it. So I wouldn't dream of saying that or, or, th or thinking it, that there's nothing you can do about a situation because there is. But together we can make different a change if we explore and respect one another because it's the more we know and the more we're able to take on the true history of things, that, uh, just what people are actually doing, that, that builds the depth of our respect. So it's also our own education about things and our openness to hearing and to knowing. Because if you want change to happen, you actually need to show how to lead the way if you're invited to do that. My hopes for the future, I guess, is that the whole spectrum of respect will be recognised and practised by everybody. What does respect really mean to you and who are you thinking of and how can you say it with a, a fuller meaning than you might have in the past?